Good afternoon. My name is Elizabeth Romedio, and I'm here to uh, give you a presentation on climate change and wood fuel nexus. Originally, my title slide looks like this, but when I came to see the uh, picture <laughs> of the conference, and it's exactly wood fuel, so I said, this is a perfect picture for my <laughs> presentation. So uh, thank you. It's really one of the most important sessions for this conference. Uh, I'm going to talk about, first of all, what wood fuels can do to mitigate climate change. It's one of the uh, titles of an article written by FAO. And second, I'm going to mention something about why has it taken too long to streamline policy development in wood energy. And then I'm going to tell you something about my case study about wood fuel in Cebu and the way forward after. First of all, what is climate change? It's change in long-term global average temperature and rainfall, and everybody knows that. And uh, while climate variability is change in periodicity of temperature and rainfall, but global warming leads to climate change and enhances climate variability. So global warming, therefore, is due to the abnormal increase in greenhouse gases in the atmosphere that trap heat. And also, um, the climate change, however, cannot be addressed or understood in isolation. We need to consider the fact that climate change involves a complex interaction between climatic, environmental, political, institutional, social, and technological processes. Well, literature tells us that there are many causes of climate change, and among them, natural processes and anthropogenic activities. And there are also global <coughs> earth polluters, such as accumulated emissions, airborne, and others. So we all know that adaptation and mitigation are some of the responses or the two major responses to climate change. Now, there are many ways of mitigating climate change, and one of them is to reduce the demand for emissions, intensive goods and services. Second, increasing the efficiency gains. Third, increasing use and development of low carbon technologies and reducing non-fossil uh, fuel emissions. But, the heart, but at the heart of these proposals is the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions through reducing energy use and switching to cleaner energy sources. This brings me now, therefore, to the heart of my uh, presentation because the demand-side fuel switching strategies to reduce carbon emissions is really the proposal is to use bioenergy in residential, industrial, and transport energy demands. Many developing countries have already successfully pursued such options. Now the question therefore is that, what is the potential of wood fuel to replace fossil fuels? Um, it's a little bit um, uh, sometimes misleading and confusing when we say bioenergy, renewable energy, wood fuels, uh, fuel wood. So uh, there are two major sources of definitions. One can use the F FAO, UBET, or the Unified Bioenergy Terminology, or one can look at IEA Task 29 on the socioeconomics of bioenergy. Biomass, of course, is the material of recent biological origin. Examples are trees, crops, and others. While bioenergy are all energy forms derived from organic fuels of biological origin. Some of the examples are energy crops and others. While wood is the most important bioenergy and when I say wood fuel, it means both fuel wood and charcoal. Uh, before, we used to call fuel wood firewood. It means the same. So bioenergy has many end uses, cooking fuel, heating, electricity generation, and others. There, in terms of forms, uh, bioenergy can be, uh, biomass can be in solid, liquid, and gas. And in terms of types, we have woody, non-woody, and other organic waste material. So like I said, examples of woody biomass would be forest residues, wood fuel, wood waste. Examples of non-woody biomass, short rotation crops, urban biomass, and other organic waste material include animal waste and sewage sludge. And uh, again, the most common form of bioenergy is wood energy. A quick look at bioenergy and wood fuels, which is part of bioenergy, is that wood fuel is the dominant household fuel among 2 billion people in the developing world. Now, literature differs. Some would say 3 billion, others would say 2 billion, but rest assured, many people still continue to depend upon wood fuel as their primary source of household fuel. Wood fuel, particularly fuel wood and charcoal, currently provide 14% of the world's pr total primary energy, 
and the trend is expected to continue in the many years to come. In developing countries, biofuels provide one-third of total energy, and in some countries in Africa, as much as 80% comes from uh, biofuels. Fuel wood and charcoal are the most common types of uh, biofuels, and they are vital in the nutrition to poor urban and rural households. Aside from household cooking and heating, wood fuel or bioenergy is also essential to food processing, brewing, curing, producing electricity, and other industries. Among developed countries, wood is increasingly used as a substitute for fossil fuel, fuel in ter for heat and power generation, and it, this one can help reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Now, the next photos below is um, obtained from FAO, and this one in developed and developing countries, wood-based biomass uh, is receiving increasing attention as potential renewable energy resource while the traditional uh, wood fuel still predominates in many developing countries. I also uh, took this slide from uh, uh, BP, British uh, Petroleum, and as you can see, uh, renewables is increasing at an increasing rate in the, that's the projection until 2030. And um, in terms of renewables, you have uh, hydro, nuclear, coal, gas, and oil, but here you will see that in uh, uh, renewables, you have 10.2% bioenergy, while the rest of the renewables are much lower. So therefore, there's a growing market for modern, efficient bioenergy that uses wood in the form of pellets, residues, and various types of dedicated feedstock supplies. Now, there are many uh, studies done already on the medium and large-scale coal generation plants. Um, it is also said that the use of bioenergy is carbon neutral because it has the carbon sequestration and carbon substitution effect. So it is uh, touted to be carbon neutral. All in all, wood fuels holds a promise in mitigating climate change because it's a way of life. It's been there for a long time. It's non-fossil fuel based, it's carbon neutral, it has environmental benefits like biodiversity and so on. It's a source of income for many hundreds of people, thousands of people. It creates jobs, it's an informal sector activity, it helps reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions, it's renew renewable and therefore there is a possibility of sustainability and it's part of energy security. But for now, there are many issues that surround wood fuels or bioenergy. First of all, it's traditional. Therefore, the issue of efficiency and impacts of the traditional biomass sector, particularly in the regions of South Asia and Africa. There is also uncertainty of actual emission savings, and a lot of research are needed in, uh, to, to showcase this, uh, these cases uh, in terms of the improvements in bio, traditional biomass and uh, emission savings. Likewise, there is a need for more demonstration at commercial scales that use of uh, more modern technologies that utilize wood more efficiently. And therefore, there's a call for more coordinated testing and evaluation of implementing wood fuel programs and projects. Um, at large is a need for policies and institutionalization of incentives that can facilitate the management of forests for multiple purposes, and among them would be the use of, uh, of wood or forest um, resources for energy. Let me go to uh, my case study. Uh, we have been working on this since 1993. So we have two publications. One was in July 1993 on patterns of commercial wood fuel supply distribution and use in the city and province of Cebu. And in 2003, we came up with another one. It's a continuation, but it has more information and it's an update, the socio-economic uh, and environmental impacts of wood fuel consumption and production, a case study of Cebu. This year is uh, 2012, and we're supposed to come up with a 2013, so it's one of the longest running case studies, but uh, I'm still looking for funding sources. So um, Cebu is uh, part of the Philippine archipelago right there in central Visayas. The archipelago is made up of 7,107 islands, and Cebu particularly, is uh, a city second to Manila in terms of progress in economic development and urbanization. At the moment, the Philippines is a total of 97 million people with an HDI 0.63. So despite its uh, rapid urbanization, 
Uh, what is interesting about the Cebu case study is the fact that even in 1901, uh, I'm sorry, in 1870, according to Ahern in 1901, Cebu is a very narrow strip of land without any pristine forest. However, until today, wood fuel industry is a, is a very thriving uh, business and industry. So the question is, where are all the wood fuels coming from, or the wood? So here are some of uh, uh, the old uh, uh, information, wood fuel use is decreasing and the other types of fuels are increasing but it's only for primary cooking. Because if we look at both primary and secondary fuels, you will see that there is an increase actually or a rise in the use of wood fuels. Now there are many variables that uh, uh, or the reasons for using wood fuels and among them are uh, price, income, taste, preferences and so on. But there is also a very interesting trend in fuel switching from uh, primary to more superior fuels or from uh, superior to, 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 to more inferior fuels, particularly because of the cost of uh, other types of fuels. So um, uh, the trade, uh, this is an example of the flow of the trade of wood fuel from rural traders, from gatherers, and so on. So wood fuel trade provided thousands of jobs to many Cebuanos, and in fact, many Filipinos. And in 1992 in particular, I'd like to note that the local economy was able to save up to 12 million US dollars from the use of wood fuels instead of importing fossil fuel-based fuels. So these are just some pictures of uh, distribution practices. Uh, this one is uh, fuel wood and this one is charcoal. So to my question, where do all these wood fuels come from? So some of them come from wood fuel coppice lands, so no forest, from tree shrub fallows, from woodlots, from mixed land uh, areas, agroforestry systems, from shrubland and brush, uh, brushland areas. In terms of technology until today, we still use the traditional uh, two types. One is underground, uh, this is called tinabunan, and the other one is uh, above ground approach. So there is a very bad need for policy and uh, improvement in the technology, otherwise uh, it's very uh, inefficient, it's the, the making of the charcoal. So the conclusion of the Cebu case study is that despite urbanization, bioenergy will remain to be used by majority of Filipino households. Wood fuel will continue to be used because of its affordability, availability, because many are just available for free, the taste and preference is part of culture, and as a backup purposes, even if LPG is now the main cooking fuel. Household income is the main determinant of the household cooking fuel choices, and uh, the, uh, the most of the wood is coming from coppice lands and tree fallows and not forest. And there is an increased effort in improving efficiency of charcoal conversion technology. The way forward is to recognize the important role of bioenergy and wood fuels in mitigating climate change. And there is a, a need for improving the data management, particularly among poor developing countries and that uh, policy development should be provided that will lead towards addressing the issues of cost, technology, socioeconomic concerns, and demonstration of successful wood fuel and bioenergy projects. Most important of all, I need to find a funding sponsor for my third round of wood fuel studies so that I can have a 2013 update after the 2003 and 1993 publications. Thank you for listening.